an absolute moment of magic. I think this is the biggest match in the open era with the most implications. The importance of that match and where it will stand and dictate the history of our game as it's told for a long time is enormous and I don't know that it can be overstated. Globally, Rafa and Roger have transcended the sport of tennis. Well, the other players suffer a little bit because these two players are just so much more popular. Are you kidding me? And that is why sport is the best form of reality TV. Ladies and gentlemen, the Australian Open men's final, 2017. Two of the world's most loved and tennis's highest achieving players once again find themselves across the net from one another at a Grand Slam final for the first time in half a decade. From Switzerland, Roger Federer. The dream final opened another chapter for two players that had once illustrious careers, adoring fans, a healthy rivalry. Rafael Nadal. And now had something to prove. Ready. Play. So you got one straight hair. Yeah, Excuse you me. No. The grey hair or no, straight no. hair? <laughs> All right. You can rip it out either way. I can't believe it. Yeah, yeah, do it. Ah! Oh. <laughs> All right, that's going to be a lead by <laughs> You want me to sign it? Or... <laughs> so welcome back to tennis. Tell me what you miss the most. That feeling of nervousness, I guess, you know, and you're maybe a pawn to win a, a big match or a, a big tournament, and so it was, uh, it's nice to be back. At the start of 2017, one of tennis's greats and one of the world's most loved sports people was experiencing a foreign feeling, coming into a Grand Slam tournament as an underdog. There are those who thought maybe a 35, you know, he's not going to come back. But why should he bother? Does it's, that amuse you? No, I mean, like, in a way, it doesn't surprise me because I've been talking about retirement for seven years. So um, naturally, that's the perfect opening for people to ask that question yet again and uh, think to themselves that why more? Like Federer, Nadal was also coming into the 2017 Australian Open at the bottom of a downward career spiral. You're back from a break. Roger has spoke about how he's learned from your approach to coming back from injuries on the tour. What have you learned about yourself? About myself? <laughs> you know, it's always uh, new, new things now, but the uh, most important thing is be patient and be enough humble to work from zero to recover the good feelings as quick as possible. At the start of the 2017 season, Roger and Rafa slowly made their way back onto the ATP Tour. Roger showed his aging body may not be his toughest opponent after all. Starting the year by narrowly missing a victory against young German Alexander Zverev in Perth. Rafael Nadal is ready to serve down the far end. Rafa used the Brisbane International to rebuild his confidence. Too good. Perfectly charged by Nadal. And though beaten by Raonic in the quarterfinal, the once mighty bull had begun to rage again. Great to have Roger and Rafa back, both healthy, playing some great tennis. There are a lot of people in good form. Of course, Andy Murray, Novak Djokovic. So if you ask for a tip, I'm not giving it, because it's going to be impossible. Uh, there are so many good players this year. Are you looking forward to being that, an underdog? Yeah, why not, for a change? I mean, I prefer to be the favourite, but uh, <laughs> underdog is OK. As long as I'm healthy and I feel like I can go four or five sets, many matches in a row, then I, I think it's going to be fun. Do you come here believing that you can win seven matches in a fortnight on hard courts? You cannot say I am ready for it or I am not ready for it. Let's see. The whole world was talking about Djokovic and Murray. 
uh, and their domination as one and two, and for many years to come. But I think we all underestimated the quality of Roger and Rafa, and maybe it stirred them up a little bit that they weren't in the news anymore, that everybody was talking about Andy and Novak. Everybody, I think, underestimated the talent that they have, the confidence level that they have when they get on the court to play a match against another player. The confidence level to, to say, I think I have a chance to win the tournament. Both coming back from extensive injury breaks, Many were asking how long Roger and Rafa could stay standing in the first Grand Slam event of the year. At one end of the draw, Roger's track to the final looked daunting. Faced with tough opponents, Roger was incredible. Federer just hammers an ace. Perfect forehand winner down the line. Absolute magic. And Meltzer can only defensively put up a ball that is going to be smashed away. Can you believe it? Serves to the Federer backhand. Federer just gets this back into play, moving to the net, and Roger Federer is through to the second round. I'm happy how it went, and I think from here on, it's only going to get easier, in my opinion. Here comes Roger Federer, as you can tell by the cheer. Now a Ruben. He might be feeling a little bit nervous, and well, he should. Roger Federer on Rod Laver Arena uh, in the sunshine. Nice volley at the net. Again by Federer. Sublime. Backhand. Ruben picks it up. Federer's at the net. The forehand by Bolly is good. It's game set and match to Roger Federer. For these fans, he's number one. You're the best 35 year old I've ever seen. <laughs> Don't worry, Fitz. You can tell me the truth. I wasn't feeling as good as in the beginning. To progress to the third round is a, it's a good effort, but uh, there's a long way to go. Uh, Thomas Burdich next. Yeah, it's not an easy draw. I like Thomas's game, and uh, I'm sure it's going to be a tough one. On the backhand, cross court forehand from Federer is good again. The verdict almost ends up running up the tunnel. A little extra pace coming off the Federer forehand. Started with Roger Federer beating Thomas Burdick. Clean winner from Federer. Shot making skills in just a different level. Federer under control there, moving to the left, to the right. Burdick gets there, but Federer cuts off. Stop it. Thomas Burdick was well inside the top 10. OK, Roger, wow, that was quite impressive. Let's be honest, did you expect to play that well tonight? I didn't quite ex expect it to go this, this hard. Also, I, I knew it was going to be a tough third round if I got there, and I couldn't be happy right now, obviously. Wow, this is a great display from Federer. He truly is the greatest of this generation. That was a superb backhand. Three match points. He serves. Nishikori gets the backhand back into play. Federer goes for a big one right in the corner. Nishikori puts up a defensive lob. It finally lands. And Federer jumps for joy on Rod Laver Arena. Tonight was special, no doubt about it. Going five against K here on Rod Laver Arena with the comeback is definitely very special. The fans love Federer. The crowd that are packing in tonight are going to really appreciate what Zverev brings to the court. It's been a very up and down night for Roger Federer so far. Federer moving to the net. Zverev just watches that ball go past. Powering towards the finals, Roger continued to hammer the competition. I think now that I'm in the semis and uh, feeling as good as I am and playing as good as I am, that's, that's a huge surprise to me. If someone would have told me I'm playing the semis against Stan, um, there's never would I have called that one um, for me. For Stan, yes, not for me. You never miss a thing. You can watch catch-up TV wherever you may be. On the go. On the lunch break. On the run. On the double. On the quiet. Oh, that's gold. On the weekend. <laughs> Even on the... Download the free app today and watch your favourite show on the go on mobile, tablet or Chromecast. Switch it up. The only place to watch more of your favourite shows is the new 7 Plus. Get the new 7 Plus app now. Switch it up. At the other end of the draw, Rafa had his own mountain to climb. My guess the back of Nadal. And Nadal hits a winner. 
the 2009 champion is through to the second round. Today was a good first round for me, and I'm very happy to, to keep having chances to play here in Melbourne. I think we're all happy to see you back, Rafa. It's great to see you. Good luck the rest of the way. Well done today. You know, <laughs> for me, the most important thing is uh, win matches, no? As the opponents got tougher... Begdasis is bossing this point at the moment. So did Nadal. Nadal goes down the line. That's a trademark Nadal forehand winner. As he enters Rod Laver Arena. For Nadal, you could kind of sense that he was on to something. Tremendous stuff from the Spaniard. With him, you get a sense early on in the tournament. He either comes and he plays at a certain level, or he doesn't. And he hits his forehand at a certain level, or he doesn't. And here's the big forehand winner from Rafael Nadal. And I think everybody could tell that, that oh, there's something, you know, uh, fresh about Nadal. Cross-court forehand from Monfils, he done it! Why do the simple volley when you can hit it like that? The no-look, if you don't mind. He takes the third set. He had you, he was up in that fourth set, 4-3-30 love, and then you won eight points in a row. How did you do that? I really don't remember now very well. But, uh, <laughs> uh, Controlled by Rafa. Nadal, way out of court, plays a forehead up the line for the winner. Match point. Welcome back to the quarterfinals. I'm very, very happy, you know, being quarterfinals again in the Grand Slam after a couple of years without being there. It's very special for me. Against Brownich in the next round. Played in Brisbane. What, what could be different this time? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's what's what can be different. No, I think it's going to be uh, a tough match for me for sure. Hopefully for him too. Facing an opponent that had two weeks earlier got the better of him, this time Rafa was ready. Radic clearly feeling the pressure. Love thirty. He serves out wide. Ranić won't get to that one. Nadal is jumping about and punching the air. We've known Nadal's a champion. Nice he pulled out champion's qualities there and now has three match points. Nadal sinks to his knees. He's in the semi-finals of the Australian Open. He has been superb. Even when I was winning a lot, I, I had doubts, so you can imagine that I have more when I am not, no? so I'm when I have any injuries. But that's good, I think, no? because when you have doubts, you, you, you feel ready to work more. You know how tough is uh, all the victories, and uh, I, I think I had a, a great career. Only Dimitrov and Vavinka stood between these two great rivals, and the final the world was hoping for. The tennis world is now starting to look at the fact that uh, the final might be a vintage final between yourself and uh, Roger. Do you give yourself the luxury just to look ahead a little bit and think what might be? You know, let me enjoy today. The, the victory being in the semi-final for me is a great news again. It's a good start of the season and... Uh, um, now, I have a very tough match against Dimitrov. As Roger and Rafa stepped onto the court for their semi-final matches, everyone waited with bated breath to see if the dream final would become a reality. Well defended by Federer. Favrinka's moving into the net, up the line. Favrinka applauds the shot from Federer. Favrinka hits. Forehand reply to the net. And Vavinka's racket is a forlorn piece of unwanted tennis equipment. Uh, he's, uh, he's an amazing player to watch and to 
to see on the court. He's playing on the court, he's playing amazing tennis, he's the best player ever. He can do anything he wants on the court. He might be the 17th seed in this tournament, but to these fans, he's number one. It will be packed to the roof in a moment because uh, the second of the men's semi-finals we're going to bring to you this evening. It's just tick past quarter past seven local time in Melbourne and shortly to come out in court will be Rafael Nadal, the 2009 champion up against Grigor Dimitrov into the semi-finals of a major again. The first time he's gone this far at the Australian Open. Can he go further? Master beat him five points from the first Grand Slam final, and he come up with big shots. Extremely well played. Did you expect that? Of course, it's what the greatest player do. He really shows why he's rocking today. Into the backhand of Arinka. Spits out! Dimitrov cross court. And he's hit that! He falls to the ground! Because he's back where he belongs! This champion, this warrior, Rafael Nadal, Roger Federer, at 35 years of age, is into the Australian Open final. His hands are in the air. He's simply outstanding. These two past champions would face off for a Grand Slam championship once again. How fragile. How beautiful, how utterly miraculous each and every one of us is. Life is a gift. Take care of it. Federer one of Rafa's most difficult opponents, or...? Is Federer for Rafa, Federer for Rafa or Rafa for Federer? Both. I think for uh, Federer, Rafa is the worst opponent because the numbers of the, his matches say that. The Australian Open 2017 final would be the first time Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal had faced one another at a Grand Slam final since 2011. Hey, Roger. Federer hadn't seen a Grand Slam final since 2015, Nadal since 2014. For me, it's surprising sometimes how they think that big champions like Roger and also Rafa, they just disappear. We don't have to pull any hairs out of your head this time? No, not this time. <laughs> I always um, was sure that they could uh, make it to other Grand Slam finals. The buzz around any Grand Slam final is always electric. But this wasn't just any final. It was one that signaled the comeback of two tennis champions. How many five points do you think you have requested tickets? As I'm sitting here talking to you, my left eye is on that phone. And uh, I've, I've had, I've had, hang on a sec. You see, there, there, there's another one again. There's no tickets for Sunday night. Can you hold one sec, please? Thank you, I'm busy, thank you. That's how it's pretty much been all day. Go, Go Fetty, you got Fetty. this one. Yeah. Go, Go on, son, Fetty. you got it. Two great ambassadors for the game, they're very popular, but he couldn't find more different personalities, different styles, different backgrounds. And I think that makes it more intriguing because I think uh, Rafa facing Roger, 50% is for the other guy and for the Roger, the same thing. It's good for our sport, I think, that people is talking a lot again about this match and I am excited about it. We will meet each other again in an unbelievable stadium, in one of the most important events of the world, without a doubt, so that makes the moment more special. I think we've done a lot for the game. Uh, Rafa has been one of the most popular players that we've had. 
He's done tremendous and I've tried a lot myself and because we've both been in the game for almost 15, 20 years now, a lot of people know us, so they look to us. We're completely different people, completely different players. This matchup is just very intriguing for a lot of sports fans. I hope a lot of people are going to tune in. So why the fascination? Nadal and Federer, the raging bull and the Swiss maestro. All the kids, they love Rafa because you know, the headband, the way he's on the court, the fighting spirits. And when Roger is coming back and playing, winning like this, it's more like the classic. Globally, Rafa and Roger have transcended the sport of tennis because you can mention their names and even their first names or their names together, and you don't have to be a tennis fan to know what you're talking about. <laughs> you're so you dirty old. You play him all the time. He goes to my backhand, and then he comes with the forehand, and then he goes with the forehand, and the forehand, and the forehand. <laughs> Better to the backhand. OK. To the backhand. <laughs> Rivalries in tennis are nothing new. Agassi and Sampras, Graf and Sellis, Lather and Rosewall, and Evert and Navratilova. But Fadal was a rivalry with one key difference. On the one hand, it's this great study in contrast, lefty versus righty, race versus grid, and clay versus grass. But I think fans are really into this rivalry because it's so strange in that you kind of like both guys. <laughs> Does that feel? When you like Roger, you like Rafa. When you like Rafa, you like Roger. But it's different personality, and that's why it's good for tennis. 15. Someone else on the playa? Yeah. <laughs> In Switzerland, <laughs> nice ones. Uh, legs only. <laughs> These guys genuinely like each other. I think they also realize that they're better off for the existence of the other. Well, a little bit older. We are a little bit older, so we have to, we behave differently. We'll see how they behave when they're 36. <laughs> well, you're not 36 yet. <laughs> if Rafa Nadal doesn't exist, Federer wins more slams, sure. If, if Roger doesn't exist, Rafa wins more slams. But I think they both recognize that ultimately they're better off for, for the existence of the other one. Call it, Roger. First of all, play with with Roger always is a is a very special feeling. No, he's. Um, He's probably the, the opponent that when I go to court, I have very, very emotional feelings. I respect him in a massive way. He's a true champion of our sport. He carries himself always very, very well. I think he's a great role model for kids to look up to. We're both professional tennis players, and we both want to win. I'm going to chip it. <laughs> they respect each other. But it's like a boxing match. When you get on the court, even if you respect your opponent, you just try to beat him all the time. But when they're outside, they like each other. They are friends, really. I think what Roger did for, for the game during all these years, and he's going to keep doing for the next couple of years, is something very important for our sport. He helps a lot to the game, to step the game to another level in terms of fans, in terms of interest around the world. It's been a real privilege and a pleasure to play against him. And we've had so many wonderful matches, especially at the highest of levels. We go way back, and I think forever we will look back and actually have enjoyed uh, some of the moments that we had. I think it'd be hard to say that Rafa and Roger isn't the greatest men's rivalry. These are the two great rivalries that people really have chosen sides for. Roger and Rafa, they're both great players, great people, great sportsmen, and yet they're polarizing to their fans. Well, the other players suffer a little bit because these two top players are just so much more popular. I find it very easy to cheer for both of them, but you'd be hard-pressed to see a Roger fan want Rafa to do that well and vice versa, probably because they've taken things away from each other along the way. At the end of the day, this was still championship tennis. Both uh, arch rivals and also good friends, even though they both want to beat each other's brains out when they face off against each other. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. And there had to be a winner. Yeah. Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. It's time to detox your energy bill by comparing it with Simply Energy's great pay on time discounts of 20% off electricity and 20% off gas usage charges. Call 138882 or find us online to switch today. We got Ben great value car insurance from Woolies. I know what you're thinking. Why are we paying for his insurance? <laughs> 
great question. But then again, why is he still living at home? <laughs> Woolworths Car Insurance will beat any comparable comprehensive renewal notice. Plus you get up to 10% off online and lifetime guarantees on repairs. It's big car insurance cover at supermarket prices. That's why I pick we Woolies. We pick Woolies. God, what a matchup. It's a great matchup. It's, it's the cool, calm Roger against the Rafa, who's the intense grinder. It's a lefty and a righty. Talking about Roger and what you've watched him be able to do not just this event but throughout his career what are the thoughts or feelings seeing him from across the net well he's one of the toughest opponents that you can meet no that's that's the that's my feeling no and uh, you know playing against him only playing at your highest level you you will have uh, maybe chances we used to play tons of times during during the year and this hasn't happened in recent times So we have to remember a little bit how it used to be and for me Obviously, I'm gonna remember my wins because I did have also a lot of wins against him even in Grand Slam finals We're drawn to history and we know that Nadal holds a lead 23 wins versus Federer's 11 but that being said, 2017's a little bit different. We've got two players recovering from relatively long-term injuries. We've got some older bodies. There was a large number of known unknowns. Rafa's just a beast. He is a mental beast. He's a physical beast. He's, he won't give in. The way he played uh, or plays and played against me has always been extremely difficult for me. Every match that I feel like I won against him, like almost counted double for me. As the final drew closer, the world reluctantly picked sides, but found it hard to predict a winner. He's a real fighter. He's tenacious. He's wonderful to watch, actually, because he uses every part of the court. He's a true professional in every way. Every point's fought for to the utmost of his ability. You know, if you, if you wanted to pick somebody to play for your life, Rafa would be a pretty good pick. I've always enjoyed watching Federer play because to me he seems to have the skills of the older players like Leva. Uh, he modelled himself on Leva's play. Oh, his natural uh, grace and movement around the court. He's like a ballet player on, on the tennis court. And also I think he's got a very underrated heart. I think, um, you know, people see his compassion and his, his purity off the court. But he is, uh, he's a great competitor on the court. He fights a lot harder than he, let, than he lets on to. The crowd were in their seats. Sports fans were tuning in from lounge rooms and bars across the world. Melbourne was heaving with masses of people. The dream final was about to begin. I think it might be the most important match of all time. And I, and I don't say that lightly, but if you look at the context of history, Rafa at 14, Roger at 17, if Rafa comes away and he's won that, he's two away from the all-time lead with the French Open staring at us in the face uh, coming up. If Roger wins that, he's got 18 versus 14, he's created enough distance that I don't see that gap being made up. Um, the, 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 the importance of that match and where it will stand and, 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 and dictate the history of our game as it's told for a long time is, is, is enormous and I don't know that it can be overstated. It's the night that everybody were looking forward to for the whole of the last week. It's Roger Federer against Rafael Nadal. They're calling it the greatest show on earth. It is being anticipated globally. It, it's like a, a movie script, a, a book, a novella, if you like. A remarkable situation, a repeat of the final from eight years ago when Federer lost to Nadal in five sets. Cannot believe that number, Chris, eight. Doesn't feel that long ago. This could be the greatest match ever. I mean, it does transcend our sport. It is two icons of the game. Do you think it can live up to the build-up? I mean, this has been no, huge. I don't see why it can't. It has on many occasions before. In the next five hours or so, we'll know who the champion is and, and who either has 18 slams or 15. I think it'll be the most watched tennis match in the of the game. We don't know if we're ever going to see these two come face to face at a major again. The city of Melbourne, they're really embracing this final. The clubs are absolutely packed. It's going to be a real heavyweight clash tonight. It's the men's singles final, the closing match for the Australian Open 2017, and we could not have delivered a better finale than this. From Switzerland, Roger Federer. From Spain, Rafael Nadal. 
Standing across the net from each other were two rivals, but also two friends, two of the greatest players the world had ever seen. And in front of them was more than just an opponent. There was injury, there was history, there were nerves that come with being in a Grand Slam final after six months away from the game was watching on. A smash 10-piece lunch pack is only $9.97 each. Or a 10-pack of Faber-Castell connector pens for a low $2.48. And enhanced learning with an 11.6-inch HP Stream Seller on laptop, just $296. Plus, order online, and if your product's in stock at your preferred store, you can pick up within two hours. Be back to school smart by shopping at Officeworks. It seems many people just let their car insurance renew year after year. They simply never learn. Uh, oh, I can. Compare and save at comparethemarket.com.au. Simples. Chuck, you can concentrate when you're hungry. Eat a Snickers. Better? Better. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers really satisfies. I think the anticipation of the hype was incredible. There was such a build-up of tension to that night. Everyone had like this real vested interest in what was gonna happen. Ready. Play. Play. Get the popcorn out. <laughs> All right, let's go. As the match started, injury and time were forgotten. Oh, it gets the tape! And not even Federer's wheels could get him there quick enough. Both players brought their all. Stunning point there for Federer. Even people in the crowd were going, oh, during those shots. Roger came out strong. And Federer gets first blood. But this early on, it was still anyone's trophy. Moment of truth in the second set for Nadal. Oh, and Rafa came back to claim the second set. Set number three, Federer to get it underway. If he wants to win the Australian Open 2017, this is a must win set. It's a psychological battle, and he's got scars. Absolutely near-perfect tennis from Roger Federer. He has trounced the third set. Federer had decided before the match, clearly, that I am not going to allow Rafa to play the way he wants to play. I'm going to take the racket out of his hand. I don't believe what I've just seen. But Nadal fought back. From the Spaniard, crest ball winner! And fought back hard. Oh, what a remarkable shot by Nadal! No way! Pushing Federer to his limits. Oh, Nadal's found a wonderful serve himself. And the match into a fifth set. A gentle fist pump from Nadal. We're all square. Fasten your seatbelts, folks, because we are going the distance here. It wasn't your stereotypical Roger and Rafa match. The first four sets were error-strewn. Neither player was necessarily on their game. Because of the anxiety that both players have felt, haven't been in that battle for quite some time, it meant a lot to both of them to be in a Grand Slam final against one another and obviously to win it. And then it elevated to the level that we expected in the fifth. This was the final everybody wanted to see. He has timed this to perfection. At three games to one in Nadal's favour, it looked like Rafa was going to do what he always did best. Come home strong and take away the fifth set and the championship. I mean, mentally, the sky is a fortress. When you have a player that plays Roger's style, there are going to be great rallies and great moments, but there are also going to be mistakes. Oh, it's high-pressure tennis, this. 
and Nadal's going to make mistakes, and he did. Han misses his backhand. They'd come in both injured at the end of the season before, and they made a great rush to the final. Then they played an epic. Nadal doesn't lose from 3-1 in the fifth very often to anybody. Are you kidding me? And against Roger, the way that Roger lifted his game at that point in the final, those were magic moments. Mind-boggling. We used to see Roger in th that situation, but now that it was Rafa, so it was something completely different, unusual. Oh, that's a thing of beauty. Rocket Rod Laver is out of his chair. We don't care about the level of the match itself. What we care about is the level of tactical skill and the level of emotional involvement from both players. That's what we want from a tennis match, not great shot making, because that's not what tennis is about. Great rally between these two. Oh. Then Nadal finds an impossible oh. angle, but Federer still hits the winner up the line. It's Federer who produces an absolute moment of magic. I think Rafa got a little bit nervous, hadn't won a Grand Slam in such a long time. Oh. And Roger sensed a small opening there. Nadal's confidence diminished in that fifth set, absolutely. Uh, I had some chances in the fifth with breakup, but it's true that after I had the break, he, he played. Very aggressive, hitting a lot of great shots. That sort of 20 minute period where Roger won those last five games of the match were astonishing. Now, match point number two. Surely this time. Championship points for Federer. I told myself, play free. Be free in your head, be free in your shots, keep going for it. I kept on believing that there was a possibility that I could win this match. I think that's what made me play my best tennis at the very end of the match. to win against Rafa, it'd be super special and very sweet because I haven't beaten him in a, in a Grand Slam final for a long, long time now. I think he made me a better player. It remains for me the ultimate challenge to play against him. You couldn't wish for more drama here. Is this the title for Federer? He's got it. It is! It's in! Victory for Federer! He's champion in Australia for a fifth time. Major number 18 for the Swiss Maestro. I didn't come here to spend like a four or five weeks in Australia. I thought it was going to be maybe one good week here in Melbourne and have a great time. This went so much better than my wildest dreams ever could imagine. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2017 champion of the Australian Open, Roger Federer. So good to see you. Thank you. Thanks for everything, man. Appreciate it. I don't think we both, uh, either one of us, believed that we're going to be in the finals of Australia when we saw each other four or five months ago. 
I'm happy for you. I would have been happy to lose too, to be honest. The comeback was, was perfect as it was. Tennis is, a, tennis is a tough sport. There's no, no draws, but if there was going to be one, I would have been very happy to accept the draw tonight and share it with Rafa, really. Rafa Nadal and Roger Federer in 2017, one of them 36 years old, one of them 31 years old, coming off dismal 2016s when we were all thought that the train was finally pulling into the station. We know you've been asked about retirement for about 10 years now, but you're coming on the court yeah. when you said, um, <laughs> if I'm back next year, does it invite some comment on that? How much should we read into what you said there? I mean, this is all about, you know, knowing that I have only so much tennis left in me, and if I do get injured, if I miss next year, that who knows what happens. Now, I can defend. Well, or just go on a, on a vacation. As the crowds emptied the stadium and the celebrations began, there was one big question surrounding Federer and Nadal. What was next? Just did another game of I Spy. Ball it off at AMF. Well, playing against Rafa and Roger is always a treat. I think anyone who goes up against those, those guys really um, gears up for it. It's uh, one of the most special things you can do in the, in the sport of professional tennis doesn't matter what he's ranked, whether he's number one in the world or 400 in the world, he's gonna be the biggest draw in tennis, so we're very lucky to have him around. To play a guy like Roger, it's, it's a dream come true. He's my all-time hero. I try to match my game to his. It's amazing, I mean, it's unbelievable for his age, obviously, what a year he's having. He's won nearly every tournament he's played. Uh, you look at Rafa becoming world number one again, and it's unbelievable. I love seeing those two guys do well. I genuinely get happy if I see Roger win a tournament because I know that he has done so much to the game. He's very respectful and he's led the way for every tennis player and, and any, any tennis player in the future who decides to play tennis. It's going to be quite a big fight at the end of the year for the number one. We have a very interesting times in tennis again. You like that one? One goes like there's a hair, there's a gray hair. It's like I pull it out and then like that, like yanked it. They yanked it out. I told them to, and then he yanked it out. But you know it was on film, so like I think they they released it. It was so funny. <laughs> All right, Roger. So before this season, some people had written you off, and then you come back and win two majors. What are we seeing here? Is it your final act, or is it the start of a new beginning? Hmm. Was. Well, it's a new beginning in some ways because I think after surgery, things are different. You know, I don't want to say you have a different body, but one thing's for sure, you have a different mindset. I think this year is definitely very different to any other season that I've ever played in before. Um, I understand that people maybe wrote me off before, you know, this year, but I think it was more just the unknown. Nobody knew what to expect, not even myself. So that was actually the quite exciting part going, coming to Australia, not knowing, nobody knowing. Um, what was going to happen, and we saw nobody had a clue, not even myself. It was very difficult to uh, imagine something like this uh, one year ago, but it uh, happened, and uh, here we are with all this achievement. The comeback of Roger Federer and Rafa Nadal to now be the two best players in men's tennis, what it's told the rest of the field is that you can have an injury, you can have setbacks, take time off, and look what you can still do. I still pinch myself. I still, I'm home sometimes and when I have a glass of champagne with my friends and family and they go like, this is Studio Australian Open, cheers, guys. And we're still joking about it because it was 
that crazy of a moment in my life that uh, we couldn't believe it and all the five setters, the rivalry with Rafa, being down to be one of the fifth. We still feel the passion for what we are doing, you know, and we work hard every day with, uh, with the right uh, attitude and atmosphere to to keep improving things, you know, and that's why probably we had the chance to, to come back. And of course, uh, we need some luck at the beginning of the year and happen it, and later everything was fantastic. In your winner's speech on court, you said you wish it could have been a draw. Mm -hmm. Do you still feel the same way? I mean, yes, but no. <laughs> Roger and Rafa have got a, a rivalry that's been going on for some time. And what was the first moment that you and Rafa spoke about this Australian Open final in private, and what did you say? I don't think we ever did talk about it. It's not something you really do. Um, you talk about it in the press, him and me, but you never really sit down for a drink and go like, so how was the Australian Open for you? <laughs> it just, and especially, you know, for the one who's been on the loser's side, for his sake, you don't go there, you know, because you don't know how much it might have hurt him. I coming back from an injury, you know, and I lost the final. So for me, it was a great event, a great tournament. I played very high level of tennis. I lost the final against a player that was playing very good, and I had my chances. So I come back home thinking that I am in the, completely the right way, and I just keep going. You just know that, you know, down the line, they're going to look back at their careers and say that was one of the best things we ever had was the rivalry. I think this is more something you'll talk about when you're all retired and maybe we're in a boat in Mallorca, hopefully one day he'll invite me and we'll go for a nice cruise and we'll talk about the epic battles where he beat me and I beat him and we look back and we laugh about it. If these two guys decided for whatever reason to walk away tomorrow, we can argue whether it's 2-1 or 1-2, but I think these are the two greatest players of ever and certainly the greatest rivalry. After everything that happened at the Australian Open this year, what's it going to be like to go back? Mm, I haven't thought about it a whole lot yet, how it will be to be back. Not guarantee what's going to happen in the future, no. So I always know that. So the only thing that I, I can do is work the right way to, to try to hold this, this good level. I hope I'll be there. I hope I'm healthy.